Okay, this is uh, welcome to CSF 4203, week five. This is chapter 15. Salam. One technology and protocols. In this chapter, we are going to talk about uh, circuit switching and packet switching. Okay. So to achieve to transmit data. After your local area network, communication typically is achieved by transmitting data from source to destination through a network of intermediate switching nodes, yani through the provider. That's why we call it switching network. So the switching nodes provides a switching facility that will move the data from node to node until they reach their destination. We have two different types of switching networks, technologies. We have the circuit switching and the packet switching. This is a switching network. You see they are going through the nodes. You see this, this called, these are called switching nodes. That's why we call it switching network, okay? We have the first type is circuit switching network. This is the old one, this is the first one. Okay, communication via circuit switching implies that there is a dedicated communication path between two stations. And path is a connected sequence of links between network nodes. I will show you now, example. On each physical link, a channel is dedicated to the connection. The most common example of circuit switching, if they ask you, is the telephone network. Don't forget that, please. For the operation of circuit switching network, there are three phases. Circuit establishment, please read the explanation. So you are establishing the circuit. Then you start transferring the data. And the end, you have to circuit disconnect. So these are the three phases. And remember, this came in one of the questions. Okay. So we have example connection over a public circuit switching network, which is the public telephone network. You know, Okay. Also, circuit switching is also used in private networks. And some large organization, they have very, they are very rich and they have important uh, communications. So they interconnect their various sites using dedicated lease line from the carrier. Carrier and telecom company. Circuit switching at the beginning was developed to handle voice traffic, but now it is also used for data. But as you will see, packet switching is better. This was the old technology. This is how circuit switching look like. So we have the subscriber here. Subscriber. Lamil. He is connected to the end office, from the end office to the long distance office, long distance office to the end office, digital BABX, and the receiver. Subscribers, they are the devices that attach to the network. Okay. Subscriber line, the link between the subscriber and the network, or we call it subscriber loop or local loop, this one. This cable here, okay. Salam. Exchanges, they are the switching centers in the network. The exchanges, they are the switching centers in the network. A switching center that directly supports subscribers are known as end offices. Okay, why with this one is called end office? Because it's near the subscriber, but it's a switching. Okay. Oh, it's an exchange. The exchange near the subscriber, we call it end office. Trunks, they are the branches between exchanges, or we call it carrier system. So here we have the exchanges and we have the branches. Or carrier system, they call it. 
circuit establishment, subscribers connect directly to an end office, which switches traffic between subscribers and other exchanges. Okay. In that example here, uh, a connection is established here, this one here. Look here. He is explaining this one. A is connecting to B and A is and C is connected to D. Salam. So here we have a connection is established between line C and one channel on a TDM trunk to the intermediate switch, which connects that channel to a channel on a TDM trunk. Okay. To the D's office. One of the key requirements for voice traffic is that there must be virtually no transmission delay, of course, especially if you are doing voice traffic. There should be no, del no delay. No delay. understood. So one of the key strengths of circuit switching that is that it is transparent. Once a circuit is established, it appears like a direct connection to the two attached stations. So this is how it is connected. You see the trunk between two exchanges. It's called the trunk. How is the signal controlled in circuit switching? The mean it control signaling is the means by which uh, by which the network is managed and by which calls are established, maintained, and terminated. Okay. So this is the definition. Both call management and overall network management requires that information be exchanged between subscriber, switch, uh, common switches, and between switch and network management center. Okay. Of course, if I have a big company, big communication, thousands of sub subscribers, I should, I should have also an advanced control signaling. So how do you so there are thousands and thousands of subscribers. So the signaling can be also classified as functionally as we have supervisory signals that are used to determine if a needed resource is available or busy. Okay. We have address identifies a subscriber. Okay. We have call information refers to those signals that provide information to the subscriber about the status of a call. Okay. Also audible tones that can be heard by the caller for an operator with the proper phone set. And if you see signaling, you know, when you call out, you will get, you will hear different tone, you know, the tone for busy, tone for if the line is engaged, it depends on the network also, not available for all of the network. The last one is very important, which is network management. It is used for the maintenance, troubleshooting, and overall operation of the network. Okay, so the control signaling is not only about the voice calls, it's also about managing the network. Any questions? So this was circuit switching. Circuit switching has some limitations. Okay. That's why we move to packet switching. Two disadvantages of packet of circuit switching were in a typical user host data connection. Much of the time the line is ideal. Thus, and you know, when you are talking to someone or on the phone, the line is dedicated for you only. And one is speaking, the other one is listening. Maybe there are some short, uh, silent time or ideal time, but still the line is, this, is engaged. You, nobody else can use it. I'm talking about circuit switching. So this is a shortcoming. Also, the speed is constant data rate. It will give you constant data rate. Circuit switching will give you the constant speed or constant bandwidth. bandwidth. Okay, so the solution to this is packet switching. We will see these videos at the end. 
The, the good thing about packet switching is that data are transmitted in short packets, approximately uh, 1500 bytes, the size of the packet. Each packet contains a portion or, or all for a short message of the user's data plus some control information. Remember we said there is the data header, some information about the signal also. The control information at minimum includes the information that the network requires to be able to route the packet through the network and deliver it to the intended destination. So here we have routing. Not only switching, we have routing. This is a good diagram here. See the data divided into packets. And we have some control information on the header. See this one? These are the control bits. Then it is sent on the packet switching network. We have two types also of packet switching networks. We have datagram approach, okay, and we have virtual, virtual circuit approach. That, in datagram approach, packets could take different routes. If you look here, this is datagram approach. Look here. Remember we said it is divided into packets? One, two, three. You see here? Two, three is taking this route. Two is taking different route. So when they arrive here, they are reassembled. So that's why it's called datagram approach. The second approach is, ah, uh, by the way, this is the characteristics. That each packet is treated independently. The core setup is avoided. It is more flexible and more reliable. Now, what about the other method? The other method is called virtual circuit approach. This one, the pet, all the packets take the same route and they, they reach the destination at the same time, at the same order. Understood? So this is datagram approach. I think this is a diagram. Yeah, very good. Virtual circuit approach. You see, they are all taking the same path. You see them? What are the characteristics? A pre-planned route is established before any packet are sent. Alhamdulillah. The node need not make a routing decision for each packet. It is made only once for the whole packets. Okay. So here they summarize the advantages on the packet switching on the left and the disadvantages. We have already talked about the advantages, but it's okay again. Can you please read them? Why is it good to have the packet switch? It's line, ef line efficiency is greater. Okay. Because a node to node link can be dynamically shared by many packets over time. Two stations of different data rate can exchange packets. Remember there we said they have the same rate here. They can have different rates. Okay. When traffic becomes heavy, packets are still accepted. Remember in the circuit switching, if the line engaged, halas, nobody can send. Here, imagine the network is busy. You can still send email, correct? Priorities can be used. Also, with packet switching, you can put priorities, quality of service. But what are the disadvantages? Delay, because it's going through more devices, more equipments. Jitter, the overall packet delay can vary substantially. So we call this jitter, packet jitters. Overhead information must be added to each packet. Because it's going to, we are putting control bits, remember control signal. We are also, it is going through the routers. So this is taking time and overhead. And more processing is involved in the transfer of information. And by the way, there is one 
point, I think it's maybe written somewhere, maybe it's written in the comments. Please always read the comments under the PowerPoints. You see the comments down? Read them. Uh, packet switching, the technician needs more training because he has to deal with routers and switches. So they need more training than the old technology circuit switching. Any questions? One, we talked about one before, but we have also wide area network for voice. Okay. And uh, mainly businesses, they use the public telephone network to make telephone calls, right? Uh, also, we can have, they can have private networks are appropriate for big organization that have different size and they have the money. Okay. Or the third option, which is now a days is more available, which is void. It uses a packet transmission approach over internets and intranet. Which one is cheaper? The VoIP. Because you are, you are using the internet to make your calls and intranet. Now we summarize the different wide area networks for data. Okay, with their characteristics. I'll open it here, it's because of the colors. Okay, I think now it's more clear this way, right? So we have the first one is public packet switching network. Uh, here we have user must lease a line from uh, the user's computing equipment to the nearest packet switching node. That's why it's called public packet switching network. You don't own it. Then we have pri private packet switching. The user owns or leases the packet switching node. And you are a company. You have a branch, you lease from the telecom company a private line to communicate with your branch. So you have more control on the connection. Then we have private lease line. No switching is involved. It's, it's only for you, for your organization. Okay. And users can employ dial-up telephone lines for data communication points. Then we have private circuit switching network. Uh, the user has an interconnected set of digital VFX. This network can carry data as well as voice. So we have private circuit switching and we have private packet switching. Private circuit switching, the old technology. And then we have the ISDN. ISDN offers both packet switching and traditional circuit switching. It's integrated service. Colossus. There are more advanced technologies than ISDN. But the good thing about ISDN was that it, it uh, offers both packet switching and circuit switching. Okay? And, and integrated services. In the old days, we used to get our internet through ISDN at home. Now we have different two types of traffic. We have stream and we have bursty. And enter when you are browsing the internet. Are you uh, streaming and you are, or you you click, then you read, click again and read. So we call this burst. Burst, yani, hudu asifa, yani, tinzil adrakar. Then quiet, then burst. Slow traffic, then high traffic. Slow. We call this burst. The stream is characterized by lengthy, fairly continuous transmission, like file transfer, telemetry, telemetry and devices that measure, take measurements, okay, or batch data processing application, digitized voice communication, bursty, uh, such as interactive client server traffic, such as transaction processing, data entry, time sharing, fax, 
ترانزميشن يو سيند ذا فاكس فيرس بعدين خلاص اتس نوت وركينج صح اني كويستشنز ذس امبورتنت فويس اوفر اي بي It is the transmission of speech across IP, IP based networks. It works by encoding voice information into a digital format, which can be carried across IP networks in discrete packets. Okay, discrete packets. Advantages over tra a, a traditional telephony, cheaper. You can integrate services also, data, internet, Uh, telephone calls, they are all integrated in the same line. Okay, so it's more efficient. This is how VoIP is done. Here we have Alice is making a telephone call. The data is compressed. And then it is bucketized or bucketization using the RTP protocol. Okay, then it is IP transmission, and you look here, what is it using? UDP. Remember we said that new CIN2103 or CIS1103, UDP is used for VoIP. Then it arrives at the, so it is using RTP protocol. Don't forget that. VoIP must go in, exist with the existing telephone infrastructure. Yani it, you already have landlines. Okay. And you want to connect some VoIP machines to it. You can do that. So here I have. This is my. Oh, here we need to change here. My so this is, this is a bare stand stream. I was looking at the PowerPoint. So. Okay, so we said here RTP is the main protocol for uh, VoIP. Uh, this here we have a traditional network, private, uh, public switch telephone network. If I want to use VoIP, I need to have a VoIP PBX connect through the internet to my public switch network. So here, from VoIP, I can talk to the landline, to the normal landline. But your telecom provider should allow you also. Remember with your, do uh, you know any of the VoIP applications, Skype? You can use Skype to call Skype, but can you use Skype to call a landline? You have to have some permissions and so on. Okay. Okay. These are some VoIP interest, uh, devices or products, such as traditional telephone sets. Conferencing unit also. Have you seen the conference unit? You press to talk and start عشان تتكلم بعدين شيل هذا. هذا بسموه. This is called conferencing unit or conference. Then we have mobile units, and we have soft phone. Soft phone is a client software you install on your computer to make a call, for example, using Skype. Okay. Very good. Any questions, Shabab? This is the summary. Please let me know if you have a question. Any questions? Okay, now you can see the, please, the videos. There are two videos there. You can.